What's up guys, Jeff Cavalier, Athlinex.com. Jesse Laco, Athlinex.com. So today we're talking about 12 things that will improve the quality of your life as you age. Very, very important things. So I don't have to worry about that because I'm only 29, right? So, all right, I'm out of here. No, 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 no. You and everyone else your age, don't go anywhere because as a matter of fact, these are things that are very preventable. You are in control of these things. Okay. And if you start doing something about them now and caring now, you're gonna have a much better outcome as you get older. So I can look like this guy when I turn 80. So what does that mean? Is he healthy? How do you uh, know anything about so. his health? Why, because he's got abs? Uh, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> this is another point. You're just feeding me all my ammunition here. Just because this guy's got abs, and let's face it, he's not just taking Flintstone vitamins, there's, there's no indicator here of whether he's actually healthy. Who knows if it takes him 45 minutes to get himself out of bed in the morning, or if he walks up a flight of stairs if he's not out of breath. Fair enough. The things I'm talking about here are going to be much deeper in terms of your overall health. For instance, what's your VO2 max? Uh, five. Do you know what VO2 max is? <laughs> no, I have no idea. Do you know what VO2 max is? <laughs> Guys, I've talked about before, it's a measure of your condition, right? Okay. And being in good condition, it's your aerobic fitness levels. I've talked about before, you don't need to do conditioning to be ripped or lean. Really? As a matter of fact, talk about that. yeah, I mean, nutrition alone, can handle that part of it. But your heart is a muscle too, and you should care about training your heart. Your VO2 max is going to be the ability of your body to utilize oxygen to fuel the things that you're doing. Okay. If you have a better efficiency at that, you're going to be healthier long term. So much so, one of the guys that I'm a big fan of, Peter Atia, he has a new book, Outlive, by the way. In this book, he talks about how important improving VO2 max is. If you got it to the top two and a half percent, you would be able to decrease your all-cause mortality by up to five times. Really? Now, he also points out that you're talking about people who smoke or have diabetes. Those are risk factors that decrease your lifespan mm -hmm. by two to three times. Well, this is going to have a greater impact on your overall health, as I said, up to five times by simply just paying attention to this and including it in your overall approach to training. So how would you do it? Good question. So the best way to do this is just to train at a high level of output. The type of cardiovascular conditioning work that maxes you out in about four or five or six minutes. This is not like going for a one hour walk or, or run on the treadmill. You can't do this for more than four or five minutes. So, it's so difficult, in fact, that as you raise this heart rate way up, you have to take an equal time rest after doing it. So if you do a four or five minute burst, mm -hmm. you've got to take a four or five minute rest. Okay. And the best protocol is one that's roughly doing these four or five minute bursts four or five times, right? The four on, four off. And do I have to four do this or five every times. day? No, you only have to do it about once a week to have an impact on your overall VO2 max. Again, you're like, if you don't even know what it was. So if you're not, if you don't know what it is, you're not doing anything about yeah. it. If you start doing something about it, especially at your age, it's gonna have a big impact. The second thing I'd say is, what's your, what, your hydration like? What's your water intake like? Uh, I like to think it's pretty good. I drink a bunch of those Nalgene bottles with the, water, uh, with the rubber band around it that you taught me. Right, um, so how much do you think you're drinking? Uh, a lot. <laughs> how much water are you drinking? We know that water is an incredibly important thing to focus on and make sure you're not just guessing, because most of us guess too low. We think we're taking in more than we are. Yeah. And the, the, the fact is that I like to see people take in way more than what is oftentimes recommended. They say, oh, eight ounces or eight, eight, eight glasses of eight ounces a day, so 64 ounces. That's not enough, especially if you're an athlete, especially if you're active and you're trying to build muscle. These are all tissues that require hydration in order to be able to perform and grow and, and, and take you to new levels. You can't be doing it with that little amount. So I like to recommend at least three quarters of your body weight in pounds will be in ounces of water. Okay. All right. So if you're a 200 pound person, you're talking about 150 pounds or 150 uh, ounces of water okay. per, per day. Per day. Per so day. it helps when you have some measurement of that. So in other words, hydration will set you free. Yes, it will, Jesse. <laughs> you're already coming on. The third thing, do you work on your weaknesses? Yes. What are your weaknesses? Uh, I'm sensitive. Women? <laughs> I'm sensitive, okay. <laughs> Leave me alone. Women, <laughs> okay. So what I'm talking about is, when's the last time you sort of went to go scratch yourself on your back and you notice you really can't get your arm as far back as you could before? Or that old test where you have to put one arm behind and then one arm this way here and try to touch your fingers together? If you haven't tried it in a while, what's your performance like? Can I tell you something? Can I share a mission here? Yeah. It used to be so damn easy for me. Really? Do you know what I can't do anymore? Touch your face no, behind your back? No, I can't do it. How many of you can do the same thing? Here's why that's a problem. 
when your body loses functionality like that, mm -hmm. it doesn't come back. I'm talking as a physical therapist. It will not magically come back as your body loses function unless it's directly related to some illness that you're undergoing at this moment acutely. You're going to lose that ability and continue to lose that ability. It's going to get worse and worse and other things are going to start to be lost as well. You have to work on re regaining that if you've lost that ability. So something as silly as not being able to do this or do this. Well, you know what this is? This is external rotation at the shoulder on this side. This is internal rotation at the shoulder on this side. Two very important functions of the shoulder. If you don't have that, you're going to be in a position as you age where even movement itself is going to feel way more challenging than it should have because you never did the things that you had to do. You noticed they were losing, you noticed, you noticed they were slipping away, but you did nothing about it. You will never gain them back unless you are proactively trying to do something about it. Speaking of proactively, that's where we talk about correctives. Okay, yeah. Do you do correctives, Jesse? Yes, I do. Why do you do correctives? Uh, it keeps my joints healthy. Because you follow Athlete X? Yes, I do follow Athlete X and your advice. And also it makes me uh, you know, perform better in my big lifts. Well, just all my lifts in general, but. Right, so the thing about corrective exercises is they look like the boring things. Yeah. They're little rotator cuff exercises. Band they're pull aparts. Band pull aparts. They're working on scapular mechanics and motion. Here's why they're so important, because they become the protectors of that declining function we just talked about. Oh. In other words, they become the preventers of that loss. Mm -hmm. And here's a, 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 a sort of a, a cold reality that you're going to have to face. Because I can't do this anymore, I can't look at it and say, well, I'm 47 years old, I've lost maybe a quarter of that function in 47 years. If I live another 47 years, I'm only going to live in, lose another quarter of that function, so I'll be as half as functional. That is not how it works. How it works is it starts to become a much more rapid pace of decline as you get older. So maybe you only lost 25% in the first 47 years of my life, but in the next seven years of my life, I might lose an additional 25 or even 50%. Oh. Wow. So it accelerates. These corrective exercises, as boring as they may seem, fit a very important part of a training program. That is why we program them into all the things that we do, because they complement. And not only that, in the short term, they help you to do better on your bigger lifts. Yeah. Right? The things that you are actually are caring about, Jesse, in your young age, those things will benefit from doing the corrective exercises. The next thing, what's your grip strength like? Do you have a strong grip? I like to think so. I deadlift pretty high with, uh, with no straps. That's true. Well, do you have a strong grip? This is a grip strength, hand strength dynamometer. Okay. Give it a squeeze. Now, obviously everybody there doesn't have one of these, but I, I think that it's so important that we have this in our uh, gym here to make sure that we can test grip strength on people because yeah. we know what a correlator it is to not only the state of overtraining, right, but your ability to perform at a high level, but it's also becoming an indicator, as we see, with mental decline and aging and overall poor health as you get older. One of the biggest things that's correlated to bad health is a bad grip strength. So how do you improve that? There's a lot of ways you can do it. We have one way, we do it all the time, with the dead arm hang. Yep. As a matter of fact, Jesse and I had a challenge where we hung off against each other. Yep. What you do is you just simply hang on to a bar and see if you can last for two minutes without slipping. And it starts to burn through your forearms and everything, but again, this is good. This, as you'll see here soon, stress is a good thing. Yep. You could also do a weighted carry. I love farmer's carries. So you could still take that same body weight that you're holding up overhead, divide that weight between two dumbbells. So let's say again, 200 pound guy is gonna grab two 100 pound dumbbells and see again if they can hold them for a full two minutes. Yeah. All right, so it's a very important thing. Um, training with weights. If you are not training with weights, I, don't, I understand the value of exercise, I understand that, which means just moving your body around sort of mm -hmm. casually. Training to me is already meaning a much higher level of intent. There's a purpose behind just the exercise, yeah. right? But if you're, if you're stretching and you're doing yoga or you like to do conditioning, that's all amazing stuff, but you have to add in the strength co training component. Okay. If you want to live your healthiest years as you get older, you have to be training with weights progressively challenging your body to get stronger, or at least progressively challenging your body in some way. Could be just doing higher repetitions, but taking them to failure. Do not shy away from effort as you get older. In the gym, you have an opportunity in so many different ways to do this. It's a now, good thing that I like to use weights. <laughs> it's a great thing you do weights. Now, a little point follow up on the last one. Don't just run to the machines all the time. Why? Why do you think, based on what we just said? Oh, I get it, because your grip strength. 
if you go to like the seated chest press machine, there is no grip strength involved there. Right. Right. If you go to an overhead press machine, there's no grip strength involved there. You got to be picking up dumbbells and picking up barbells. It's a very, and taking your weights and racking them back, helping out the gym and keeping it clean and racking your own weights. But grabbing things is going to also help to improve your grip strength. Yep. So making sure that 90% of your training is taking place with dumbbells and or barbells as the implement of choice, okay. right? And then of course you could use bands and of course even some of the pulling machines like lat pull downs or seated rows, they are gonna have a grip component to it yeah. too. So it's not all machines, mostly it's the pushing machines. The next thing is you're going to have to adjust your training focus as you get older. Are you just, you know, I'm asking the viewers out there, are okay. they just continuing to do the same thing they've been doing all along thinking that that's the best approach? What are you doing? Uh, I'm following a program. So, well, that's good. You know, programs are good. They're, they give you that path. But what I'm saying here is, as you get older, orthopedically, things are going to change a little bit. Okay. And there's a difference in terms of the type of exercise and the stress that you're putting on your body in terms of what you need to do to ch make your changes. For instance, compressive type exercises, right? Like squats, mm -hmm. right? Like bench press on the shoulders or chest. Or, those exercises, you need to remove some of the load because the overall amount of compression, deadlifting is a compressive type exercise yeah. as well. I love that. As, as you get older, you need to start to remove some of that load and trade it in for other forms of stress. Not change the exercise, change it in for different types of stress, some more metabolic stress or eccentric okay. stress, right, with okay. the squat. You could focus more on eccentrically, but decrease the load because compressively, those forces can start to add up over time. You can go back to guys like Ronnie Coleman, guys who spent a lot of years a heavy weight. beating their bodies up. They go back and say, yeah, I wish I didn't do so much of it, right? Or you look at the other types of joints, like you look at the shoulder, actually, and with the shoulder, there becomes a secondary issue of the number of rotations on the tire, I say, the wear and tear. Yeah. Happens predominantly in these ball and socket joints of the shoulder and the hip. If you are moving the shoulder, even if you take the load completely away, the number of rotations here, sooner or later, is going to wear down the structures in the shoulder. So you want to become a little bit more economical, where it's not just all about high repetitions being performed, but you can increase the load in certain exercises and circumstances where you can decrease the number of rotations on the tire. So, so decrease the number of reps. Or decrease the number of reps, but increase the load. So yeah. there's, a, there's a balance, and we can get into this in, in a separate video because there's so much more there to be discussed, but there's a balance in the shift in your training focus to give you the best end result for your body so it can be prolong your, the, the ability to perform for many, 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 many years. Okay. The next thing would be down adjusting your caloric intake as you get older. So are you adjusting calories as you get older? Many of us do not. I haven't. Well, yeah, no, I haven't. <laughs> you have to. Yeah. Why? Because even though we're doing all the things I'm talking about doing here today, mm -hmm. you could be still losing muscle mass. You will be losing muscle mass. It's a fact of aging. Our goal is to try to stave off muscle loss as much as possible and stave off that atrophy for as many years as possible. But it's still an unavoidable fact that as you get older, through sarcopenia, you're going to lose muscle mass. As you lo lose lean muscle tissue, your metabolic rate will go down. Okay. As your metabolic rate goes down, your caloric needs will go down. So someone like me is going to probably suffer the most from this because I've eaten a very consistent meal plan for the last 30 plus years, consistently. It's true. So I'm going to sit here and say, it's what I always eat. Like, I, how, why am I getting fat? I'm, I, I, this is what I've eaten my entire life. Nothing has changed. Yeah, things have changed. You're losing muscle mass. You're losing some of that depot to handle those extra calories, mm -hmm. and you're now being able to, you're being forced to store them in the form of body fat because they're not as utilized as they once were before. Your body's become less efficient. So you do have to become aware of the fact that you will be eating less and you need to make smarter choices because when you start to make your cuts, what type of foods are you cutting out? You want to maintain those high micronutrient dense foods, right? The ones that are nutrient dense and make sure when you're making your cuts, you're cutting out some of the things that aren't as nutritionally profound or helpful to you in the long term. Such as sweets, candies, and processed foods like donuts. <laughs> Your diet, as a matter yeah, of fact. Oh, come on, I'm much cleaner than I used to be. Next thing, are you doing what everybody seems to be doing these days? Or are you dunking yourself in cold water? No. Or are you getting into a sauna? No. Okay. Here's why I think. That? You know what? I'm coming around to the idea. Okay. Because I, 
I act like a little bitch when I get we're near, near any cold water. That's why Jesse filmed that cold water exposure video in the shower that time, because oh. I wouldn't go two steps near it, right? I am coming around to the idea because, again, from Dr. Peter, Peter Atia's work, like, we're finding that the worst thing you can do is avoid stress as you get older, right? It's, again, what type of stress are we talking about? Lifting weights is a form of stress for our muscles. Avoiding stress altogether, right, becoming sort of weak-minded is really accelerating aging. Fi seeking comfort is going to make you old. Finding ways to make your body uncomfortable forces it to continue to adapt and become resilient to the types of stress that you apply to it. Okay. So that is why people are so attuned to this idea now of cold water immersion or sauna. And there's been a lot of work done lately on the combination of the two, specifically in protocol, and only amounting to about 12 minutes combined per week of hot and cold exposure is enough to kind of spark a lot of good things in your body to keep it at a peak and sort of keep your resilience up against disease and everything else. Okay. So it's a very important thing. I'm going to be looking more into it. I'm going to figure out a way to not be such a bitch when it comes to <laughs> cold. I'm okay with hot, but when it comes to cold. Yeah, I don't like the cold either. Next thing, jumping and running. Do you jump and run ever anymore? Yes. You do. Yes. How many people out there do you think as they get older have literally stopped running? Unless there's a reason to run from something, they're likely not running at all. Running from a, from a lion. Yeah, <laughs> and that's likely not happening. So are they jumping? Are you jumping at all? Do you ever jump, honestly? You need to continue to do those things too because those are different forms of stress that your body receives that can only be received through those two activities. And when you stop doing them, you start to down adjust your body to become more capable of lesser things. And that's not what you want. You want to be able to continue to do this. Here's a story. You know what I do every night when I walk in here, Jesse? You know this, but I'm asking you sort of uh, in, in, as if you don't know. As a generality? Yeah. No, what is it that you do, Jeff? <laughs> when I come in here, I have a box set up at 42 inches on a box over here. When I come into the gym, I jump on it every night once. You might be saying, that's enough? Yeah, really? Think about this. 365 days at the end of that year, you that's 365 more jumps than the person out there who just said they're not jumping at all. Fair enough. It adds up. And what I'm doing is using it as a benchmark for me to say, can I continue to do this? Now, progressively overloading that and making that more challenging, there's certainly a benefit to that too. But I'm saying for me, at least at the bare minimum, I need to be able to continue to maintain that ability to jump at least that high. And of course, I still run and I do other yeah. things too. Uh, this is a really important one. Okay. Everything else we talked about was stressing your, 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 your body and stressing yourself in some way. Do you mentally stress yourself? And no, not about those lady problems again, Jesse. <laughs> do you mentally stress yourself? I, mean, I know you do because you do it every day here at work. I'm stressed all the time. Stressed <laughs> all the time here at work. <laughs> I stress out about not being stressed. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. I'm talking about something a little bit different here though. You need to stress your brain. We call it cognitive weightlifting. Okay. You need to stress yourself in a way very much like you'd stress your body, where you're pushing yourself to failure, right? You need to stress yourself in very much the same way mentally every day. And as you get older, people start to retire. And one of their main sources of stress in terms of having to figure things out and overcome a problem and you know, problem solve something that's challenging mm -hmm. happens at work. And unless they have a really intriguing hobby of theirs that keeps them sharp, they lose that ability. You need to seek out challenges mentally every day. So learn a language, read a book, engage in a challenging conversation with somebody. Do puzzles. Do puzzles is great. Even do apps. It's okay to be on your phone if you're kind of mentally challenging yourself. Something that forces your brain to have to overcome a difficulty will keep it sharper. And what's really terrifying? What? One in nine adults over the age of 65 have dementia in the United States now. Damn. There's a high correlation to this lack of, again, cognitive weightlifting, right? The challenge to their brain that's leading to that. There's nothing more miserable, as I'm sure someone, many people in this audience, because of those numbers, have encountered than having to see a relative or a loved one deal with dementia as they slip away. Physically being there, mentally completely not there at all anymore. Yeah. It's a horrible thing. It's, a prevent it's, it's, it's highly preventable in a lot of ways. Some things not. In some ways, making sure that you stay sharp and focused is a very easy thing for you to do every day. Okay. Lastly, regrets. 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 
the number one thing people talk about when they get older are the regrets that they have, the things they wish they did. No one's talking about the things they did. They talk about the things they wish they did on their deathbed, right? You can't have regrets. Trying to remove regrets is going to be a key for you. Starting early to remove regrets is one of the powerful things that you can do to make sure there's fewer of them by the time you're on your deathbed, hopefully when you're 120. Uh, that'd be nice. All right? <laughs> but more importantly, people might be sitting there right now after we've just discussed these keys to longevity and saying, God, I regret not doing this more or I regret <laughs> not, not jumping more <laughs> or drinking up water. Okay, I hear you. But today's a new day. Start now. Stop regretting. Start making the changes here. This little array of 12 is going to serve you immensely if you start making the changes to do them. Start working on that VO2 max. Increase that water intake. Make sure you're lifting weights. Not always out with machines. Working on your grip strength. Right? These are the things. Jumping, running. These things will help you. I guarantee you if you just follow along and do that. And again, I understand this guy looks great, this guy with the abs at 80 years old. But again, that speaks nothing to his overall health. We're talking at a much deeper level here. How healthy are you? Hopefully this video will spark some initiative for you to go out there and improve yours. If you're looking for more videos, guys, you can find them on this channel. Make sure you click subscribe and turn on notifications so you never miss a video. And also, if you're looking for complete programs where we work correctives into what we do because we know how important they are, as well as a sound nutrition plan, you can find them over at athletex.com. All right, guys. See you soon. Dude, getting old sounds terrible. It sucks. <laughs> <laughs>